Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Over the years that I've been teaching Photoshop, every now and then I would get emails from people asking me about specific plugins. One plugin that I get asked about here and there is one called Optics by Boris FX, something I had never used. Well, I want to say maybe two years ago, it was well before COVID started. I got an email from Boris Effects. They asked me if I wanted to try out their software. They sent me a license code. I tried it out. I liked it. I told them, yeah, I like this. I want to do some videos on it. Can you give me a discount or promo code that I could share with my audience? And they were nice enough to do that. They even offered to give me some training on it, which I didn't take advantage of at the time. And then, you know, life got in the way. Uh, COVID happened. My wife got ill, not with COVID, but with something else. And thankfully, she's better now. Then my son got married. And, you know, I made every excuse in the book to them. It, it just seemed like everything seemed more important than everything else. So I never got around to doing the videos. And they were really cool about it. Every now and then, they just email me and ask me if I wanted any help or any assistance or anything like that. And, you know, the time has come. I want to introduce you to Optics by Boris FX. It really is a powerful plugin for Photoshop. Now, as the name implies, uh, it's effects. They're optical effects, but it's really a lot more than, than that. I mean, it's 160 filters, and they're not just kind of overlays that you plop on an image. Each of these filters is, is live interactive. You could adjust the parameters uh, for each one in real time. There's full layers capability, so you could stack a filter on top of another filter. There's full masking capability, and there, it's not just simple masking either. There's some advanced masking options that you could use to mask these effects into a part of an image or out of another part of an image. Um, there's full blend modes, and it really is a very, very powerful uh, Photoshop plugin. Now, what I'm going to show you today is just the bare basics, basically an overview of how you would begin to use it. And I'll just do something very simple in it. You could do really complex effects. Many of these effects are, were borrowed from the world of video. So those effects you see in videos, movies, are things you could do to your image. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to Boris Effects so you could check it out. I'll also have links to some of their training videos so you could get a better feel for what you could do with this software. I'll also have listed my discount code. If you decide to purchase it, you could save some money. All right, we have an image in Photoshop. The first step is to duplicate the background layer. We're gonna do all our effects onto this duplicate layer. So hit Command or Control J to duplicate that background layer. Now you want to convert this layer into a smart object. The reason for that is, as I mentioned, you could do some very complicated things in Boris Effects. You could add different layers, masking, blend modes. You could readjust parameters for all the filters. And when you do that and bring everything back into Photoshop, you may look at it and say, wow, I messed up that mask. I have to go back in and readjust it. If you make this layer a smart object, you'll be able to do that. So to make it a smart object, just right click on it and go down to convert to smart object. And there's our smart object, we're all set. Now we're ready to send this into Optics by Boris FX. Go up to Filter, down to Boris FX, and then over to Optics. And it will open it up into Boris FX. Now it just applied whatever I did last to it, which is this cracked filter. Um, just to give you a kind of a overview of the workspace, over on the left-hand side, we have the layers. And as I mentioned, you have full masking capabilities, full blending capabilities, everything like that. Along the bottom, you have the different filters, 160 different filters in these different categories. You have color category, diffusion blur, film lab, grads, tints, image, lens, light, render, stylize, then any custom filters you create would go here. And if you favorite any of the existing filters, they'd be over here so you could find them more easily. Now, um, as I mentioned uh, before, is you have full control. Let's say this cracked filter, if I wanted to use it, you can see there's different presets. It's on this cracked preset. But if I go to parameters, you can see I could adjust like so much about this, um, like 
I don't know. Let's see here. Let's go to stamp densi density right here. Look at that. So I could add more kind of cracks, less cracks, the stamp size, make it bigger, larger. So you could do this to every single filter here. That's why I said you want to create a smart object in Photoshop because you may come back in and go, oh, I, I want more cracks. So, you know, you could add more uh, and then go back into Photoshop. So a lot of things you could do here. Now, again, I'm just showing you the very, very basics. And for this image, let's just say I don't want the cracks, all right? I'm going to go to the very first uh, group of filters under color. And you can see that there's just some very basic things here. Let's pick one called Polarizer. Now, because I didn't save this layer, um, it's just going to replace this filter with the Polarizer filter. And you can see there's a number of different presets of Polarizers. Um, it's on five now. You can see, go through some of the different ones. All very subtle, right? Let's say you just like Polarizer 6. If you want to come in and readjust a parameter for uh, Polarizer 6, you could come here and you could just change something here. I don't know. Uh, preserve highlights a little more to the right. I don't know, you can move sliders, whatever you want to do to try to modify it. So let's say that you want the polarizer as your first layer. All right, so that's good. We want to add another layer. Go over here on the top left-hand side, click this little plus sign, and now we're going to add another filter on top of the polarizer filter. Um, let's just, for this, uh, go to Film Lab. And let's go to film stocks. All right, so by default, it added this ACFA Optima. I don't want that. But you have these different film, stock, film stocks. Um, back, I still shoot film, actually. But back in the day when it was available, one black and white film I loved was ACFA film, ACFA APX film, different speeds. I like the A APX 25. So I'll put APX 25. I'll search for it. Here's right here. And there is the look of ACFA APX 25. Now, if you go buy ACFA film today, it's not the same. ACFA, when they made these great films, they went out of business. And someone bought the name, and they're now just putting some crappy film inside of the boxes that isn't the real ACFA film. It's not the same. But I'll come in here. Now, I could come in. I could readjust the parameters for this film. As I mentioned, um, it's so powerful. There's so much you could do here. Uh, so let's say I just want to bring it the mid-tones down a little bit maybe bring ooh, not that much like just a little bit more like that a little flatter look so i could come in and readjust things so oh, let's say that's all i wanted to do to this image now again this i'm just scratching the surface in in subsequent videos i'll get more involved and do some things that are a little more complex but let's click done and then it will take these two filters apply it to the image and it's in this smart filter now over here on the right hand side smart object now the advantage of the smart object I mentioned I could go back in and readjust something also it has a mask so if you ever apply filters uh, using Boris effects optics to an image and then you're back in Photoshop and then you want to mask it in or out in a certain area you have a built-in mask to do that if I want to go back in and readjust something just double click on the word optics and it will reopen that in Boris effects. And again, it has everything preserved. So I could come back in and I could readjust something if I need to readjust it. You could see how that tone curve is readjusted like I did. And then when you're done again, you could just go back into Photoshop. So there is a very basic introduction to Boris effects. I think I'll probably do a video every couple weeks. Each video will build upon the previous video. We'll do more and more with it and do different things. But I want to stress in the description below this video, I have links to some of their videos. Definitely check them out. And I think in, in some of those videos, they do give you the um, source files so you could practice uh, along with what he's doing in the video using their source videos. So you could really um, get ahead of the curve and learn uh, what you could do with the software that again, I, I think is really powerful and very, very cool. Also, I have listed that discount code I mentioned several times. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>